much, much better. Okay, all right, cool.
my goodness, man! Is everybody alive? I got two jobs to do tonight. Number one, give you the best damn post show in the entire community. Number two, wake everybody up. I'm sure half of you were asleep tonight. AEW Dynamite tonight, man. A show that existed on this Wednesday evening during the week of the Royal Rumble that nobody will remember by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. Man, I really make it. I really make it a push to get into the next media scrum, huh? I'm sure Denise has lovingly sentiments about tonight's show. Adam Copeland went on one with boring grandpa, Minoru Suzuki. The act is a little tired, TK. I think we can leave him back in Japan. Swerve and Jeff Hardy, Adam Page and Penta, Sting and Darby get their tag team championship match. And the rankings are back. We'll get Jesse's opinion on the rankings coming back to AEW. Fuck a podcast party. I'm not here to party. I'm here to go to the venue, have my cold beverage, ice cold. Same thing for you guys as well, man. And when I get there, I want to know on this boring Wednesday night, what the fuck are you guys drinking? I'll see you over there. Why has Triple H been so successful? Why is Triple H running WWE better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard on Monday and Friday night? Long-term booking. Welcome to my mother's basement. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on around here, man? What the? F Hello? Hello? Jesse! Jesse! 
everybody, man. Why do I hear crickets in the venue? Oh my god. I, you know what? Jesus fucking Christ. Man, what the fuck is going on upstairs, man? It sounds like dynamite upstairs. You walking around carrying a 1940s microphone like Bob Barker on the fucking Price is Right? My thing? road micro... Don't make fun of my road microphone, bro. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck's going on upstairs? It sounds like dynamite upstairs, man. What the fuck happened? Where is everybody? I think everybody fell asleep on tonight's show. Holy shit! Dang. Nobody's drinking here. Wait, wait, what happened? I don't know, man. Oh, you get Everybody. ready for the Royal Rumble, is what you're saying? Oh, okay, that's right. We're gonna we're gonna watch Cody not finish his story, right? <laughs> you know what? It feels like Vince and WWE did everything to get Cody back with open arms, and they treated him as such. They treated him as the you know the prodigal son that has returned. What? What's that? Rock? Rock? The Rock is gonna win the Royal rock. Rumble? Fuck Cody! It's like it's like they had a meeting sat everyone down in the meeting and then started the meeting and said, fuck Cody, and then ended the meeting. That was it. That was the meeting. Ah, uh, what are we going to do, pal? Uh, we're going to bring The Rock back. Cody, I'm sorry. Your, sto your story needs to go on hiatus for another 365 days, pal. It looks like Triple H told Sports Illustrated, fuck Cody. And then wants to backtrack. Oh, Don't I, worry I, about I, Sports Illustrated. I'm going to rant on that. them later tonight for, for a video tomorrow, man. Fuck Sports Illustrated. What a, I mean, <laughs> who do they got working over there, man? Where they got AI bots working over there? Does anybody Bullshit. even fucking write for them they anymore? They had Paul Levesque telling them what was going on. They didn't ad lib. Paul they, Levesque, Paul can you please give us a shit. statement on Cody Rhodes and WrestleMania 40 against Roman Reigns? Sounds like Charlotte Flair working over there. What the fuck they got going on there? Oh, they were told not to say shit, and somebody blabbed. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what, is, what is this, bro? I thought you were a punk hater, man. What the fuck's going on with your attire? Oh, oh, yeah, you know, I, that's what everybody says, right? I'm a punk hater, you know? Uh, you know, you know, he was to blame for the, uh, the rankings going away, man. I don't know if you saw that report. Well, I mean, uh, I love this shit on a punk decision, but, I mean, in theory, it sounded like a good idea. At the time, in theory, but in execution, it was a bad idea. Why well, getting rid of the, getting rid of the rankings? Yeah, that was a bad idea. You you know what the rankings did for me? I, I I didn't hear too many people mention this. The rankings system in AEW did one particular thing for me, and that is it separated itself from what WWE does. It literally made them different. It was the one thing you could point out and say, well, it's different because they do keep track of records and they follow the standings and shit like that. Then they quit doing that, and then they went to more sports. And but now you're just like them. Now you're just like them. Punkman tried to make tried to make the AEW locker room more like WWE. That's what he tried to do. Bro, listen, you're not going to get invited to the media scrums, okay? You can you can cut the act, okay? Please, cut the act. Yeah, pretty fucking much. bullshit, man. We can see right through you, man. It's like uh, it's like watching Denise. Like, we see right through you, man. Fuck, come on. Oh my god. Ah, uh, listen. Enough of the fucking uh, fun and games here, man. We, 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 listen, that's the type of mood I'm in, man. I just want to fucking joke around. I don't even give a shit about what happened tonight. Uh, I want to play Destiny. So do I. I, I got my controller right. I, I'm I ready. haven't logged in yet today, man. I I, I gotta I gotta do my shit. But uh, we're yeah. here to talk about uh, AEW Dynamite uh, for the 1,700 people that are in here that actually give a shit about what the hell happened tonight. Um, right. you know what, I don't man? Think they do. I think they just want to see a shit on it. I'm being honest. Listen, I'm not. It's not going to be like two weeks ago at uh, at Daly's place. I'm not going to go uh, that ballistic. But you know what, man? I'll I'll leave it up to you to start us off, man. Uh, what do you want to talk about as far as tonight's show, man? Uh, you want to start with the dead crowd? You want to start with uh, the fact that they ran a twelve thousand seat venue and they only drew what uh, twenty one hundred people in there tonight? You want to talk about Adam Copeland against boring grandpa tonight? What do you want to talk about? We can talk about the Royal Rumble. Let's talk about the Rumble. We can talk about the Royal Rumble. I don't give a fuck. You want to talk about the Royal Rumble? Let's talk about the Royal Rumble. Let's talk about the Rumble. I'm seeing people tweet and and in the in the chat talking about well, Sasha didn't show up tonight. I'm sorry, pardon me, Mercedes. So I mean, why would they want her to show up tonight? Do you see well, where they well, were? I, I, I get it. I get it, man. I get it. But 
so so for that reason, they are automatically putting her in the rumble. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know Mercedes had so many, uh, so many PR managers. Man, it's amazing how uh, she put out something on LinkedIn and all these people got the job. You know? Yeah, pretty much, dude. They, they, they just, oh well, she don't show up here. Then she's in the rumble. She's just in the rumble. Now, might she be? She might be, but. The chances of her being in WWE or AEW does not change from tonight to this Saturday. It, it, it's the same, whatever it is or was. Well, it I, does not change. I mean, I, it's, I, I guess we'll find out on Saturday if uh, Sasha yeah. Banks is back in WWE. We don't know. What if she shows up at Collision on Saturday night? Well, I mean, right around the time, right during the Women's Rumble, during right, the Women's right, Rumble match, right when Bailey wins the Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah, have Sasha debut. What if that's the plan? What a uh, what a what a counteract by TK, man. Oh my God, he's got uh, he's got the ace too. in the back pocket. That's another thing. I would. I mean, look, I'm not trying to say admit defeat. I understand this is a business and a competition, but I'm not running Collision on the Rumble night or WrestleMania night. I don't. It just seems like a complete waste of fucking time. I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, you know what I feel bad for. I feel bad for FTR. I feel bad for the House of Black that are going to be wrestling an elimination steel cage match. Steel can, cage can, match. Can you give me that on fucking dynamite, please? Maybe Who? half the fucking crowd would have woke up. Bro, is anybody in this chat? Ge I'm I'm okay. Genuinely asking. I'm not bullshitting. I just I just want to know for my own personal reasons. One in the chat. If you will be watching Collision on Saturday, two in the chat. If you'll be watching the Rumble, now everybody knows me and my stance on WWE. I just don't watch it. I don't have time. I'm not interested right now. But I will be watching the Rumble on Saturday. Someone said air the air Collision at 6 p.m. I, I mean, if they could do that, I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, seriously, I'm watching the Rumble on Saturday. I'm not watching Collision, bro. <laughs> Someone actually typed one. Somebody typed one. Well, I mean, hey, I'm, fuck out of here, man. You ain't fuck. You ain't bullshitting I, me, man. Nobody is what the only people watching Collision on Saturday are the people who have tickets to go. And I, I'm not even saying they bought tickets. They might have been. I don't know, but it's it's not even against nothing against AEW at that point. The Rumble is the fucking Rumble. Same for WrestleMania. I'm not watching anything wrestling related on those two nights, but those two shows. That's it. I don't know. That's it. I don't if know, T man. If, if TNA was running a pay-per-view this Saturday, I wouldn't be watching it. I wouldn't be covering it. I'm watching the Rumble. By the way, I'm doing a Rumble. Let me tell you something. If the Atlanta party. Braves, if baseball season was still in play and the Braves were in an elimination game, I'd still be watching the Royal Rumble. I'm watching the Rumble, man. Fuck out of here. That's a once in a year. That's a once a year deal, man. And for a wrestling fan, it's exciting. You don't even have to be watching the product. It's just exciting to watch the rumble happen. Yeah. The debuts, the returns, the action. It's just fun to watch, man. And uh, WrestleMania is tradition. Yeah. So why run a show? Run a tape show. Do something. I mean, nobody's watching, man. I don't know. Uh, you know, we could sit here and pick apart dynamite. We could sit here and uh explain to everybody what the problems are. You know, they they just filled in a gap for uh, a, a live event coordinator or, or something along those lines. His name is Kosher Irby. I'm going to see what his exact uh, titling is. Uh, they just hired this guy. He used to work for WWE. Um, let's see. He is live event pro uh he's 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 doing the live events for AEW basically let me see what his uh I thought that was Jeff Jarrett's job I don't I don't know maybe Jeff I Jarrett's that an inside was Jeff Jarrett's maybe, job maybe 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 Jeff Jarrett's an inside plant that was sent there by Vince McMahon to destroy the company oh my god uh yeah SE scoops what is this AEW hires former WWE employee as new chief operating officer who is the COO the uh, they hired a COO yeah why? RB previously worked for WWE as the regional director of live events from 2011 through 2018. He later moved on to work for Clemson University and previously worked at professional bull riding and the AAF's Memphis Express. So a big shakeup is going to happen with him because he's going to be uh, in charge of the live event experience. 
Then what is Jeff Jarrett doing? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows, they man? Ha- Look, I'm... Well, whatever the fucking case may be with this guy, whatever the case, whatever the case may be with this guy is we got to get out of these fucking venues where we are booking these 12,000 seat arenas and we're filling fucking 1,800 people. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. The one thing that drew us to AEW was the alternative. They were going against what WWE was. And I know how hot WWE is right now and they can do no wrong to anybody that's watching the product. But Jesus Christ, man, the energy for AEW has been not good. You know, on some weeks it's okay, but it's not near the levels where it was. And tonight was just, you just felt the energy was not there. And the energy for AEW is so needed. And I, I don't I don't know how else to explain it. it it's just lifeless, oh, man. man. It's bo- it, it affects us watching the show. I can only imagine how it affects the performers, man. They go out there and they're professionals and they do their job, but the show was just fucking boring. Where's the crowd? It was. And I'm not going to blame the crowd. I just think it was a boring show. I don't I'm, know, I'm, man. I just think it was a... I don't think a packed house would have made this show any better. You could have... If this same exact show happened in front of 30,000 strong, it would not have made it a great show. It would not have made it a decent show. It was still a bad show. Listen... I know that there are there are some stories going into Revolution. Sting's retirement. Dar, uh, Darby Allen is Sting going for the tag team titles. Now we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Orange Cassidy in the international championship. Roddy didn't make one mention of the title tonight. Not one. So they they clearly took the week off. They gave Roddy last week. They gave Orange this week. And that was all they did. Uh, the Undisputed Kingdom. The, the, it's I don't want to say it's dead, but it's, 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 it's ice cold. Where, right where, where the fuck are we going? It's ice cold. Where are we going? I mean, I mean, hottest thing in the business. As soon as MJF went on hiatus to go get better, Adam Cole still limping out on TV, and and this thing is ice fucking cold. Where are we going? Billy Sizane injecting more life into the venue than Dynamite was in Savannah. Billy Bomb with a $100 Super Chat. Jay, the Injustice just wanted to join the party. I'll be watching the Royal Rumble. But Sean Ross Sapp yelled yesterday, Mercedes is going to AEW. What the fuck is happening to AEW with the crowds? I'll be at Phoenix in two weeks. OTS for life. Thank you, Billy. I don't know why SRS is yelling about Mercedes. Fun fact. Maybe he should yell as his graphics department because they're fucking terrible. <laughs> Moving on. And you wonder why the guy doesn't like you. Um, thank you, Billy. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for your generosity on this uh, lame duck Wednesday. But y- you get what I'm saying? Well, you know, you said, you, you said Billy dropped the Billy bomb. Fun fact. My my um my my German Shepherd, one of them that passed away a couple of years back. Her name was um, Billy. And whenever she would go out in the backyard and, and, and poop, and if I hadn't went back to pick it up yet, and my kids and their friends want to go play in the backyard, the, the, the term is always, oh, we got to watch out for Billy Bombs back there. We got Billy Bombs oh, in the yeah. backyard. Yeah, those, are, those are Billy Bombs I don't want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> Please. That's, that's just what made me think about when I, you said Billy Bomb. I just thought that was. Thank yeah. you to Billy Sizan, brother. Really appreciate you being here as always, man. Uh, but yeah, Orange Cassidy and Roderick Strong for the International Championship, it's there, right? Sting and his retirement, it's there. Adam Copeland and the Cope Open, you know, I'm a little bit more receptive to it than I was maybe three weeks ago. It, it's building towards the rematch between Christian because Christian told him to get to the back of the line. So Adam Copeland's working his way towards the front of the line. I get it. It's a story. They're telling it, whatever the case may be. Then we got the World Championship. Samoa Joe, Swerve, and Adam Page, we all know they're headed towards a triple threat match at Revolution. Fine. We got Deanna and Tony Storm, which we'll talk about as well. Fine. But I will say this, Jesse. I'm happy the rankings are coming back. But a show like this tonight, you know, I feel like the rankings, unless they take them seriously, unless they have someone in charge to really keep up with it, dictate it to us, separate the world title from the international title, the international title from the TNT title, the TNT title from the continental title, 
all of those titles need a ranking system, right? I feel like they are going to rely strictly and solely on that and use it as a crutch to not tell stories. And then when people cry that there is no story, they're going to rely and use that as the excuse. Well, we got the rankings. These, these people are winning. These people are getting title shots because they're winning matches and blah, blah, blah. You're going to need to do more than that, man. You're going to need to do more than that. You can't just give me fucking wins on television with random matches because you woke up and wanted to give me fucking Takeshita versus Christopher Daniels. And, oh, yeah, yeah Takeshita got a win. All right, but it's not a story. It's part yeah. of a ranking system, and there's no story there. That's what I feel they're going to do, and I hate that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, one thing I can appreciate and I will appreciate is if they're going to have people beating people to pad these numbers and to move them up the ladder, like Wardlow, for instance, um, I appreciate the fact that he's beating a, a, a signed AEW veteran like Trent and not just some local enhancement talent yes. to call it a W. I will say that at least he is beating someone who is a part of the company and not just some jobber. So yeah. I'll take that. That's better than like some weird random win on Dark that no one ever saw. Went on TV against someone that's actually a part of the company. I'll, that's that's a small W. I did appreciate that tonight. Are they going to stick with the rankings? Are they going to take it serious? Do they have a dedicated team to keep us up to date every single day, every single week on the rankings? Are they going to separate the divisions? Are they going to go away in six months because they figured that they booked themselves into a corner and things are getting a little bit too convoluted for their liking? And then they're going to go back to the way that we usually see shit. And that's Tony Khan just booking random matches because he hits a button and boom, a random generator happens to book the, the matches on Dynamite. Uh, I mean, what, I think, are, what, what are we doing? Least, here? I think they at least commit to it to, through 2024. You got to give it a good solid year. I hope so. So maybe we'll see, you know, maybe they'll reevaluate next year, but I think we're in for at least a good one year long haul to see how it plays out. Why is Vikingo in the four way on Friday? I don't. <sighs> You know, you you go ask anybody on social media, oh, well, he is the AAA mega champion, J.D. <laughs> and he's on TNA. And he wrestled on TNA. <laughs> Why is he wrestling for an opportunity at the, at the international championship? Didn't you just get a match like that to wrestle Eddie Kingston for the continental title? Wow, man. How to kill Vikingo's presence on national television, man. Put him in nothing matches. Yeah, his his uh his excitement level did seem like it lost its luster for me as I'm watching him on TNA. Yeah, like oh man, because they, they, they're pumping him up. Commentary's pumping him up to say to tell us how special he is and everything else. And I know he is, but this guy's got burnout for me because of how much I watched him on AEW TV. Yeah, I'm I'm over it. I, I really. Am. Oh my goodness. Casper with a $100 super chat. Happy Wednesday. Definitely looking forward to the Royal Rumble on Saturday and AEW Revolution in early March. Adam, thank you so very much, man. Appreciate you and Billy for your unbelievable generosity tonight. Thank you guys very, very much. I don't know, man. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to so, go about this show? I don't know. So, all right. We start off, um, we get Joe coming out. And we get... Adam Copeland in the main event. I got to tell you, as much as I love Adam Copeland, Edge, rated R superstar, however you want to classify him, um, watching him in a match with Minoru Suzuki was just not entertaining to me. Definitely not main event material. No. Was right. it was it something that is like, oh my God, I don't believe a match like that is taking place. It was more yes. of, it was more of like, well, I didn't really have that on my fucking bingo card ever yeah. because Adam Copeland was edge in WWE and I never thought I'd see that match. Yeah, it was a little bit of a eye opener like, oh shit, like Yeah, yeah, like you who never seen it. It. Yeah, you, like you, uh, it was something that you thought you'd never see. So yeah, the shock factor was there, but the match I agree. Yeah, but in, in execution it was like, uh, uh all right. You know, I mean, so Well, that's what, what happens, we, we get... bro, bro. That's what happens when Tony Khan uses Minoru Suzuki man in these fucking random matches and it's happened on more than a handful of occasions, his appeal is fucking out the window, too. It's like, they make it feel like a big deal, but when he gets there, it's nothing but fucking elbow shots and punches and chops, and it's like, this is what you guys fucking drool over? 
What yeah. is this shit? Yeah, a murder grandpa. Yeah, Boring grandpa. Not, yeah, it's just not that exciting anymore. Um, so to open the show, we get Joe coming out, you know, looking fresh, looking clean, looking like a world champion. But it just felt like he just pretty much said the same thing he said last week. I mean, just hey, well, you know, at least they at least they integrated Hook into the show, right? After last week, they brought Hook out, make it you know, kind of just to keep his luster a little bit. You know, like hey, you didn't beat me into like you know the bottom of the rung. I'm still hanging around type deal. I, mean, I get it. That's cool. But we're past Hook. We're done with Hook. We should be moving on to Joe's next problem, which is Hangman and Swerve. You know, and, and they did, but it doesn't feel like it really went anywhere other than the match we got set up for next week. You know, and setting up that match, and I know we'll get to when we get to it, but it kind of just feels like they're just trying their hardest to come up with something to do other than putting these two back in a third match again. You're having them hang around so close together for no reason right now. You need to go ahead and announce this triple threat match so that the, the presence of these three together makes more sense. Otherwise, why don't they just fight again? I mean, it's a good point. Um, I'd love for a third match, but we know how that third match is going to go because it's more swerve than it is Paige right now. But yeah. going back to what you mentioned about Hook, you know, the intro to the show, Samoa Joe didn't really say much of anything, but... I love him as world champion. I think he's got final boss vibe to him. I think oh, he's yeah. fucking unbelievable. Uh, he can do no wrong. But when you send Hook out there, Hook is not the best promo guy. I don't put a live microphone in his hand to say anything. I keep Hook unique. I keep Hook special. I keep Hook with those vignettes uh, in New York City, and I give him his own special treatment. We don't need yeah. him. We don't. He needed to be out there on the show tonight, but not in that capacity. So they fucked up right there. I don't know right. why Hook couldn't walk past Samoa Joe in the back and say what he said to Samoa Joe while they were walking past each other in the hallway. I know. Listen, I love Hook too. Okay. <laughs> listen, I love the light in the ceiling. I love it all. All right. I'll go tell Taz you're a fan as well. I I don't think Bacardi likes you fucking streaming. I don't know what it is. She's telling you to shut the fuck up. She's trying to get some sleep. She was sleeping in the fucking living room. Well, she wanted to sleep in that room, and you started talking. Anyway, I have them walk past each other, and Hook says what he said tonight to Joe in passing in the hallway. Why does this man have a live microphone? I, I don't get yeah, it. And, don't and, then, and, then, and then security guards, who they always look like they went to clown you, they get <laughs> in there, and then they uh, your camera went out. They get All in right. there. And they 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 look like oh look, let me just stand here and take a suplex, you know it's like it, it felt so fucking cheesy. It felt so forced. Like why do why do we need to go that route? That whole that, yeah. that whole opening didn't even need to happen. Send Joe out there with a mission statement. Send him out there with some new material and save Hook for a backstage promo or something. I don't that get it. Make more sense, yeah. I mean, but. It's fucking ridiculous. And then and, and going back to your point about Swerve, you know, a lot of people are going to cry, oh, yeah, well, it's story. Well, what's the story? The story is that they're winning matches. That's what Tony Khan wants you to think that their story, but Paige beat Penta, Swerve beat Jeff Hardy. Outside that, what is the story? Oh, but they want the world title. Great. Great. That's not really a story. That's a direction. It's not really telling story. I don't really understand what we're doing here. I I'm looking forward to the match. These are the guys that are going to be there. But, I mean, give me a break, man. We need more. We need some I wanna, creativity. I want to care about it more. I really want to care about it more. But I, I just don't right now. You're frozen, and I don't see the background. I see. I'm coming, man. Right, it, it's, right. it's the software. It's the software for the camera. That's what's doing it. Oh. I, I found that out at least. They need to update it. There's nothing for me to do on my end to fix it. But. Well, you got to go to Elgato.com and see if there's any updates. I did. Or go to the control center for Elgato and then uh, download it. The control update. center is what keeps crashing. That's the software that keeps crashing. Oh, Elgato. Elgato fucking up there, man. It, it, it maybe, is. Maybe it's all because of that prompter you got. I don't know. The prompter has nothing to do with it. I don't know. Anyway, 
because of the way that it's wired. You know, it's two separate entities. Anyway, we'll get into, we'll pick up the show after the Joe Open. Th- those are my thoughts. Those are Jesse's thoughts on the Open. I mean, it, it, it just felt so cheesy, so forced. Hook did not need to be out there. You know, keep him special. Keep him with the vignettes. Have Joe and Hook cross paths. We know Hook is not going to go anywhere as far as the world title. I'm sure they'll meet down the line somewhere when Joe is not the champion and he'll get his victory again, you know, uh, and get back to his winning ways over Joe when Joe's no longer the world champion. But we'll, we'll get into the rest of the show. We'll talk about Sting and Darby challenging Big Bill and Ricky Starks for the tag team championship. We'll talk about uh, the rest of what happened with the six-man tag team championships. Apparently, the Mogul Embassy dropped one set of titles to go after the other set of titles. Why? I don't fucking know. Uh, And we'll talk about uh, the rest of the direction there for AEW Revolution. But I want to thank you guys very much for joining us here on the post show. This is your AEW Dynamite post right here on Off The Script. Follow me on social media. Well, now at least you're moving. Now you're moving like uh, a a row. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I had to, I I had to um, shut down the um, the software. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't shut down from the X. I had to go into the back door and shut it down and then restart it. Follow us on social media at JD from NY206. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Follow Jesse at Chi-Town Smart on X. He's rarely on there because I don't blame him. Fucking sucks I'm on there. So fuck that. Uh, but go click his name at the top of the description and it'll take you right to his YouTube channel. You need to go and subscribe over there. So make sure you guys do that for me and do that for Jesse. Uh, get those likes in. We got 2,000 in here. Uh, I think we're uh, we're blowing uh, everybody out of the water here as far as uh, retention tonight. Oh, yeah. We're more than double everybody else. Nice. Like uh, like usual, man. I'm keeping, I'm keeping tabs on the numbers, man, because uh, it's going to be a big week. Oh, my goodness. Billy with another oh, bomb. Holy Billy shit. Billy bomb. Another Billy bomb. Billy, I'll get to you in a minute, bro. Um, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Memberships are open. Get them on in. You're going to want to be here. Uh, there's going to be extra content going up tonight that is going to be available for all my subscribers and all my uh, VIPs. So make sure you guys go and do that. Uh, that is before anybody gets it tomorrow afternoon. I will be live on Friday with SmackDown and the Go Home Show. Right now, we have a tentative plan, Drew and I, for Saturday morning to do a live stream preview of predictions for the Royal Rumble on X. It'll be exclusively on X. So make sure you guys uh, keep an eye out for that. I just want to make sure I nail down plans with him and see if he's good to go there. So look forward to that. And then Saturday night, I will be live with the Royal Rumble post i will be here and we are going to kick ass last year we did 6700 i'm looking to fucking at least get to 8k in the venue so and on sure. that note join jd for the post show join jd and drew earlier that day isa is at the rumble so join me for my rumble watch along party during the rumble on saturday nice nice you all got you covered bro very good so make sure you guys go and check all that stuff out. Go check out the content on the channel. There's plenty of it. And tonight's show is sponsored by my great friends over at Game Time. You guys need tickets to sports. You guys need tickets to Broadway shows. How about a nice concert, man? Game Time has got you covered. Download the app, create an account, and use promo code JDNY, and you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. We'll talk about my great friends over at Game Time. They are sponsoring the show tonight right here on off the scripts let's pick it up with the first match yes we got adam page and pentagon jr here to open dynamite i said this on x in regards to page first of all love his mustache excellent big fan secondly adam page is a fucking boss everything he does is so good everything he does is legit He's just so consistent. Adam Page is one of the most consistent performers in all of AEW, and I am a big fan of what he does. And this was a very good match. They went almost 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Um, 
Adam Page is right now looking to get the world championship title opportunity against Samoa Joe, as is Swerve. So they're going to be going back and forth, trying to outdo each other. They're going to try and get wins, and it's going to result in a triple threat match. That's where it's going at Revolution. But this match with uh, Penta, I mean, both great wrestlers. It was a great opening match. AEW usually serves us a great opening match nine times out of ten. And I loved it. What did you think of this match? I think it was solid. You know, what do you, What else would you expect from Hangman and, and Penta? You know what I'm saying? I mean, Hangman is, I mean, I'm, I think you're right. Hangman is very consistent yeah. with, with what he does in whatever it is he's doing, whether it's a world title feud or is it a tag feud or anything lower in the current. Um, Hangman is Mr. Consistency, much like Moxley. You know, I mean, it's just a couple of guys you can depend on going out getting whatever you need over to get get it over and put on solid matches all in the meantime. So you can't have any complaints about what a hangman does. Um, I feel bad for Penta not having his tag partner and, and his brother at his side. It seems like it's it, it's kind of a hard deal to get both of them healthy at the same time, at, you know, for a long stretch. Yeah. You know, but it is what it is. It comes with the style that they work. You know, there's a, there's a reason why guys like, you know, uh, uh, Penta and Phoenix and Darby, you know, these guys are constantly hurt. It's the way they work, man. It, it, it comes with it. And they're aware of this, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not stupid. But they don't want to sacrifice what they do to to be safe. They want to go out there and, and give it all or give it nothing. So you got to respect that a little bit, at least, if nothing else. Yeah. You know, but the match was good, man. What can you say? Match was very good. Um, Samoa Joe was on commentary. Always great to have Joe on commentary. The facial expressions from Joe when uh, Penta had a great near fall or Paige had a great near fall. He's looking for Paige to lose because he knows both of these guys are coming after him. And he knows with the ranking system going into play at the end of the month that a loss would result in this revolution main event not being a triple threat. And Joe doesn't want a triple threat match. So we go to commercial break, and we'll pick it up after commercial break. They're on the outside fighting in front of Samoa Joe and the commentary team. Penta dodged a slingshot page dive and hit a somersault dive to the floor. Uh, beautiful move there by Penta. Back inside, Penta wanted a double stomp. He rolled through into a Death Valley driver on page for two, landed right on his shoulder to page. Looked great. After a spot in the corner where the 10 punches occurred, Penta was bit by Paige. Paige was biting his mask. Uh, who then fired back with multiple thrust kicks and a spinning Death Valley driver of his own for a near fall. Penta then wanted a, uh, he wanted that typical uh, snap the arm spot that he does. And Joe uh, once again tried to silence everybody because he wanted to hear Adam Page's arm snap. Uh, Page fought out of it, hit a Liger bomb, a sit-out Liger bomb. So both men are fighting on the apron. Fear Factor and Deadeye attempts were both avoided. Page sent Penta back inside. He tried for the buckshot, only for Penta to counter into a maid in Japan for a close two count. Joe and his facial expressions were great here. Penta wanted a springing destroyer on the apron, but Page reversed it into a Deadeye that was on the apron, then followed with a moonsault to the floor. And Penta ducked a buckshot back inside. Page leveled him with a lariat. And then he runs right to the apron again and delivers the buckshot lariat. Nailed it for the second attempt. One, two, three, and Adam Page gets the victory in a very good opening match. Page is undefeated right now in 2024. Swerve is as well. They're both gunning for Samoa Joe. Great match. Great match. I'm looking forward to Phoenix getting back, Jesse, like you said. I know he's been ravaged with injuries, I think. With them focusing on the tag team division again, I do think that the Lucha Brothers are going to be more of a valuable or, or two of the more valuable performers that they could add to that tag team division. I think that's where they're going to thrive. They, I mean, it could only get better, right? Yeah. I mean, as far as the tag division goes and things like that, man. But, um, I, I, again, I, I like how they're keeping these guys busy. And as far as facing talent that's actually employed with the company and not enhancement talent. Outside of that, man... The match was good, but I really didn't care about it. Uh, Triz E-N-Y, highly opinionated, says some of the worst takes ever. I I I'm sorry, bro. What exactly did we say that warranted that type of reply? 
What did Jesse? What did Jesse say that warranted that type of reply? I, I, I'm sorry. Let's forget him. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's my show. I want. I want to have some fun. Fuck that guy. Uh, I, I'm sorry. What, what's that? What's that, bro? Uh, I mean, uh, we have some of the best takes here. We have some of the more logical takes in the community. Some of the shit that I say on my own. I'm on my own show. It's just fucking. By far and away, better than anybody, man. You want some of the worst takes ever, I'll fucking... I'll give you a list of people you could go and watch. Right here is not the fucking podcast for you, then. Get the fuck out. And by the way, Billy... I, I forgot Billy. How can I forget Billy? Holy shit, what am I doing here? <laughs> Billy! There's somebody that we should be focusing on. Just gotta say, TK needs a booking team. We criticize AEW because we want the product to succeed. JD and Jesse, you guys are the best in the IWC. TK needs to wake up and give us story. The show is missing Kenny, MJF, Roosh, Hater, and Britt Baker. You know, that's a good point that Billy makes, Jesse. What, what happened to Roosh? What happened to Jay Lethal? What happened to Mark Briscoe? Kenny's hurt. MJF is hurt. Britt Baker is just taking hurt. a hiatus right now. So... Half Just, the people he mentioned are out. Brit, the other uh, half, I don't know. He can't focus on everybody at one time. Uh, Brit, hi, Britt. Hi, Britt. Hi, how, how you doing, Brittany? Oh, we, we miss you. We miss you. Uh, is is, she hurt? I haven't heard anything about her. Uh, I don't know. Either baby. that, I don't know. She, she was hurt. She was probably banged up. I'm not going to. Maybe she's hey, gonna, helping rehab Adam Cole, man. Maybe. You know, maybe she's heartbroken over the Steelers. You know, she's still upset over the Steelers not making uh, waves in the playoffs. You know, it's like. Uh, it happens. Our teams don't make it. All, all our teams can't make it. We get over it quickly. Roosh is hurt. Where Roosh did he got hurt? He got hurt in the classic. I wouldn't doubt Torn it. Torn hamstring. Oh man! How do you guys know this, man? Where was this reported? It's probably not hard to find, bro. Let me. Start. I'm gonna Google it. Let me. Roosh. Who who reported this? I didn't hear about this. The first time I'm hearing this, unless it was reported today. I type in Roosh. You know what pops up? Rush the band. There you go. <laughs> Roosh, A-E-W. Let's see. News. Leo, uh, no, not Leo Rush. <laughs> not Leo Rush. Oh, yeah, you go. Three weeks ago, Roosh suffered a torn, ha torn hamstring during the A-W Continental Classic. Oh, that sucks. There you go. See? Do your you job, go. man. There you go. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, social media sleuths out there, man. I didn't know that. Anyway. Hopefully he gets back and he gets put on TV. But where's Mark Briscoe? Where's Jay Lethal? Where were their stories? I don't know. I uh, know. We just saw Briscoe come out with um, Jay's kids. Where's Miro? I have no idea what's going on with Miro and CJ. Absolutely no idea. Anyway. It's hard, it's hard for me to play the where are they games when I don't watch all of the shows. So if I miss Collision... And stuff like that for a week or two. I try not to ask who's where because they might be on the collision. JD, you talked about it in a previous review. I didn't talk about Roosh being injured. I thought it was all. I would. I thought it was all for uh, Continental Classic effect. There, I don't. I mean, he got hurt. He did. Don't argue with them. You know the proof is in the the internet. You know. What are you talking about? I'm admitting that I didn't talk about it. You might have forgotten, and you did talk about it. Who knows? Thank you guys. If I talked about it, I'm sorry, man. I have the memory of a fucking gnat. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, moving on here. Rene Paquette is backstage with Orange Cassidy and asks his thoughts on Roderick Strong wanting to face him at Revolution for the international title. Cassidy said, sure, it's fine. I'll wrestle you. Six, it's six weeks away, though. You You're know, but a I, promo again, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's six weeks away, but I'm not going to wait. And I'm going to keep wrestling because that's my job. That's what I do. And then he asks Tony Khan to get his friends and enemies, and everybody in between, and put them in a match together on Rampage, and the winner will get a title shot on Collision. Cassidy stood there, and he kind of played up his uh, lazy character, and then he mentioned that Trent Beretta faced Wardlow next, and asked Renee, have you seen Wardlow? He's a big guy. And then Renee's like, yeah, he's a meaty guy. So uh, Wardlow was about to destroy Trent Beretta. But the most important thing here is, Tony Khan took four random people and is throwing them in the orange invitational or, or whatever the fuck they're calling it. Uh, and they are going to compete for a title in a fatal four way to see who gets a shot at Orange Cassidy in the international title on Saturday. Now, the people in this match, I believe, are Vikingo, the Butcher, Kip Sabian, 
and one other that I can't remember. But just based off those three names, you see where I'm going with this. Can, wow. can someone can someone in the company please ask me? Now I I I I know the rankings aren't ready yet, man. I know we're not uh, instituting the, the the rankings yet on uh, on AEW t- television. But what the fuck has the butcher done to get a championship opportunity against Orange Cassidy? What has Kip Sabian done? I mean, he must be making a lot of paper bags backstage so that catering has doggy bags when they're finished. And what has Vikingo done to get a championship opportunity when he lost his last opportunity at a shot at Eddie Kingston in the Continental Championship? He lost at Hard to Kill, and now he's in another match. Can someone please explain this to me, or am I supposed to just not ask questions and just sweep it under the rug? Can can you figure it out, Jesse? You got, you got an the, answer for me? Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage, TK? Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage, TK? You you went on social media and you blasted Jinder Mahal getting a championship match, and then you doubled down four times. Wow. Who's in the match? Commander. You know, Commander, people, Vikingo, Butcher, the, and Kip Sabian. The people that you put in these qualifier matches, it literally tells us what you think about said title. It literally tells us what you think about said title. If you put a number, if you had a number one contenders match for Joe's AEW world title, and then you said that the contestants are going to take place uh, in a match, Fatal 4-Way, on Friday, and the contestants are going to be Kip Sabian, The Butcher, Vikingo, and and The Bounty Hunter, or whatever the fuck it is. That's how much you care about it, so why would we? Listen, man, did you pay the exterminator bill, man? What the fuck is going on with these crickets in here? I don't know, man. Jesus fucking Christ. Why didn't I get the exterminator bill on my desk Monday morning? Jesus Christ. You're too busy hanging out at the Pearl, man. I'm going to have to fucking dump you. Maybe you should book a smaller venue. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not booking a smaller venue. No. Maybe it's you not booking a big enough venue. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Listen, what are we doing here? I thought we were supposed to have a new year, new championship, right? A new, new year, new direction. No, it's the same shit. Can't wait for fucking uh, geek number one on social media to explain to me why Vikingo needs an international championship title shot. And on Saturday of all nights, is anybody going to watch? No. No. You know where they'll be? Glued to Peacock. Yep. They'll be watching the cock, bro. We'll be watching the cock on Saturday night. Pause. I know Genius is in the chat somewhere. And next year, we'll be watching the flicks. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Enough of me complaining about it. It's not going to change. The more I fucking complain, the more they just double down, or in this case, quadruple down. Anyway. The Young Bucks were shown arriving backstage in flashy suits. They get a rundown for the show from somebody. Alex Marvez walks up, asking them about their interview last week. Marvez asks what their first plan of action as executives are. Nick said, well, first you can refer to them by their passport names, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson. Matthew not said, even their fucking names. Uh, Matthew. That's not their names. Matthew said, as the last two surviving EVPs, that backstage morale is through the roof and the catering department is also a big hit. You know, if you want to be real about it, we know what your names are. Why would you change part of your, your of your your fucking your fake name? Why don't you just go full Massey? Why don't you just change the names all the way? I don't know. I don't know. You guys got a problem with watching the cock on Saturday night? I, I mean, yeah, they'll be they'll be you're all you're watching you're, you're all gonna be watching. They're all watching the cock. You'll be on the cock Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know. Hey, yo, pause. I know. Um, their jobs are for things to run smoothly. As they run into top flight, that by the way, they asked Marvez about catering. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah, catering was delicious. Um, so they run into top flight and they ask if they're just arriving to the arena. Dante and Darius, well, they said, well, we've been here since one o'clock. 
Call time is one o'clock, bro. One o'clock. And Matthew says, Well, why are you not in your gear? And where where are your credentials? So they both said, Well, you guys know who we are. You you, you, you hired us. You hired me. <laughs> so um they they joke around and uh Nick says, uh, next time, you know what? It'll be a fine next time, but they, don't worry about it. And then they they give them a fist bump. And Matthew says uh that they're killing it. And they walk away with the run sheet, and they're gonna go do their EVP business. I'm loving it, man. I, I like the I like this direction. I mean, it's gonna be a little outlandish, where I feel like they're just gonna take everything that was said against them and kind of make yeah. it into a joke. But you know, it's gonna get them heat. It's gonna get them heat. And when they beat Sting for those tag team titles at Revolution, it's gonna get them mega heat, man. So I'm I'm all on board with what they're doing here, man. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, the the, the EVP stick. I don't know if I love it. Um, but it's fine. It's not, it's not cringe. It's not shitty. I, it just feels like it has a shelf life to me. Like after, like not for, uh, like in not too long of time, this shit's going to get lame. Yeah. It it does feel like that. Cause I mean, cause we know that's not how they are. We know this is nowhere near how they are. So they can't even be heels in this fashion and convince me that they're just being heel like. This is even this this is not even like them when they're heels. So I mean, it, it's funny right now. It is a little comical, but I, it feels like this is going to get lame really fast. I hope not. I hope that they. Uh, I hope that they weather the storm here, and I hope that they take it into a little bit more of a serious direction instead of, you know, making fun of what happened, what really happened, because it's still a black eye on the company. You know, it's not. I don't think it's any time for jokes. Really, you want to be. You want to be pricks, you want to be EVPs, you want to throw your power around, you want to parade around with the Vince McMahon fucking porn stash, that's fine. But but don't don't make everything seem like it's lighthearted and it's not serious because the, the company, honestly, is still reeling from what happened there. So Yeah, uh, Joseph Taylor, the, I know their names are, are Matthew and Nicholas, but their names are not Jackson. Joseph J- J- Joseph Taylor, bro. His favorite Royal Rumble is like one of the worst ever. So it's it's okay. Don't 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 mind him. Their names are not Jackson. Use our real names, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. That's not your real fucking name. Yes, use my real name, Gerald. <laughs> yeah, use my real kayfabe name. That's not my real name, by the way. I hate the name Gerald. Seriously, my <laughs> name is Jerry. J e r r y, not a G. J. Okay. <laughs> Is, is you ever go to really Starbucks Gerald? and they spell your name with a G? I'm like, asshole, it's with a J. Who the fuck do you know named Jerry with a G? Do I look like an old woman to you? No, nah, Jerry with a J could just be the nickname spelling. That Who? happens. Gerald with a G will be spelled J no. with a nickname spelling. I'm going to come on here from now on. Address me by my real name. <laughs> is it Gerald? No. Okay, good. That, no, it's that's, not Gerald. No, it's not. God forbid it was Gerald. I'd go get a name change. Wardlow. The Jerissimo? No. <laughs> no. Uh, Wardlow, he destroyed Shrimp Beretta here. Uh, this was uh, a little bit too much offense for my liking against somebody that is uh, supposed to be the dominating, intimidating Wardlow in the Undisputed Kingdom. We got uh, a little bit too much offense here from Shrimp Beretta, but Trent, Trent, Trent is a seasoned vet. Right, so, yeah, Trent. Trent is a Trent is no pushover, dude. He should lose. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, very handily, but you know, you don't just squash Trent, man. You make it a make it a valuable win for Warlow, though. What is going on, guys? I just I I don't really give a fuck tonight. I I just I give zero shits tonight. Just gonna <laughs> let it flow. Whatever I whatever comes out of my mouth, I mean, you got to deal with it. Come um, in your mouth. What? Who? What? What? Never mind. Go ahead. What are you talking about, cock for, bro? <laughs> Everybody's it's, watching it's, the cock. Everybody in the chat the talking about how they, they, night, they were not going to be watching the okay. cock. Let me tell you something. You're either watching the cock or watching the pee on Saturday. That's it. What are you watching, the pee or the cock? They're watching both. Watching both. They're watching both. Uh, Wardlow wins with a huge, beautiful power bomb here on Trent Beretta. Looks like, Jesse, they're breaking Trent Beretta away from the best friends, which is kind of bizarre being that they are looking like they're about to focus more on the tag team division, you'd think that with, you know, Trent Beretta being such a great wrestler and then Chuck Taylor just getting back from injury that the best friends would play 
some sort of role in the tag team division, but it looks like they're breaking Trent away because after the match, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor went to go kind of console him, and he pushed Orange Cassidy away like he was frustrated. What the fuck's going on here? They have enough tag teams to break one up, and and Trent is the break up, the breakout star of that team. Yeah. So, um, if if there's a singles run with Trent being heel in his future, I could actually see that working out. I really could. What are and we then, doing? What are we doing with the undisputed kingdom, man? They are absolutely a non-factor after the big reveal of Adam Cole's the devil. I know Cole is hurt. They can't really do much, and he's going to need his supporting characters to kind of anchor the ship here. But, my God, have you... When was the last time we got a huge payoff like we got at World's End and a faction formed with Adam Cole as the leader, and they've been this dead so soon, man? It's fucking unbelievable. And, and well, I know we're supposed to give it some time, but holy shit, they are just an absolute non-factor on this show. Well, so... What happened there? We got Adam Cole was hurt. So the whole thing was 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 just tainted from the get go. That messed so many different things up. MJF is out. Um, but I do think that there is one thing that they could and should be doing to help the undisputed kingdom. And the fact that they they are they have Adam Cole out there, I don't understand it. You have Adam Cole there. He's physically there. He should be on a microphone somewhere. You don't need him out there ringside on crutches coming out. Sit that man down in the fucking back area on a couch, something like that. Have them interact. Much say like say like the say like the bloodline does. All right, you got Cole sitting down on the couch. You got the undisputed kingdom in the fucking in their room in their VIP room, hashing out plans and shit like that. And they send out Cole and then everybody. I mean, not Cole, uh, Roddy. You know, to go out there and get business done. Feed off of Adam Cole. Adam Cole with a microphone and a camera in his face is gold. He doesn't have to be in a ring. But do more with him than just trot him out to hang out at ringside and go boom and then leave and get back on the fucking plane and go home. You have him there, cut vin uh, cut some vignettes. Do something interesting with Adam Cole and the microphone. The guy has money on the mic. Do something. Keep the feud fresh. And so you're ready to take it to another step. But there's no reason that the Undisputed Kingdom should be as much of a lame duck as it is when you have Adam Cole there. If you were telling me he's at home and unable to travel and be there, then I would say, hey, it just sucks. But you have him there. Use him. You know, Undisputed Era, when they ran NXT Black and Gold, they were legitimately in everybody's business. Everybody. Yep. Now we got Undisputed Kingdom and... They're a, a, a group of talented men. And what what is their purpose? I mean, we got a mission statement, right? Cole wants the world title. He wants Wardlow to win the world title to give him the world title. And then we got Roddy going after the international championship. What exactly is the purpose of Matt Taven and Mike Bennett holding the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships? They are fucking worthless. They are as worthless as the lint in my fucking pockets. So get rid of those titles and move on and give them something a little bit more important to do. They should be involved in everybody's business. Every they should be the yeah. they should they should be running havoc on this show. Yep. But they are out there looking at Orange Cassidy and not doing anything. Cole is sitting in a fucking chair in the aisleway and, and they didn't they didn't do anything. So how am I supposed to look at them and say, you know what, these guys feel important, these guys look important, these guys are important. They're not. And that's sad after playing off this entire MJF, who's the devil fucking storyline. Now MJF is out and we're going to take a hiatus until everybody gets back on the same page. But yeah. they'll be dead by that point. The, the, these masked devil men pissed off so many people during that build. There should be all kinds of wrestlers trying to get at these guys. I would have masked men hanging outside of my dressing room while I got the Kingdom and Roddy in my dressing room. And we're talking shop. Hey, we got rid of MJF. What's next? We got to get to Joe in that title. All right, well, we got to work our way up the rankings. Warlow, go out there and whoop Trent's ass. All right, cool. You know, uh, send the kingdom out there, and you guys go out there and do this. Roddy, you stay with me. Dude, I would central. You can centralize a fucking episode around Adam Cole and what he's doing in the back. You don't even got to bring him out to the fucking crowd. The guy can be interesting if you let him be. 
Let the guy go out there and do what he does. Adam Cole is a heel as money. I'm waiting for all this Adam Cole heat to start just fucking boiling over, but yeah. they won't let him do any fucking thing. Hologram says, can't duplicate or replicate an original. And the Undisputed Era, the OG Undisputed Era in NXT Black and Gold, to me, one of the best factions in WWE history. They ran that fucking show for three years. They were in the first three War Games matches that NXT had at TakeOver. Yep. They battled everybody on that show. What are we doing here? No clue. No clue. Because Roddy and the kingdom with, with, with Wardlow are more than capable of physically handling the load for the faction until Cole gets on his feet. They just need to put Cole in front of a camera backstage somewhere, man. Feed him, the, I mean, feed him the fucking stories. Feed him the creative to go out there and make it happen, and he will. Ridiculous. Wardlow gets the win. And nothing really happened but Trent shoving Orange Cassidy at the end of the match. Uh, Excalibur hyped up. Collision that nobody's going to watch. FTR and Daniel Garcia versus the House of Black in a cage match. This will be an elimination trios match in a cage. Don't know why we're not getting this at a pay-per-view. Don't know why we're not getting this on a dynamite. But Saturday night, when everybody's going to be watching the Rumble, yeah, we'll just do that on Saturday night. Come on, bro. Nobody's watching. And then Brian Danielson versus Yuji Nagata. Tony Khan woke up this morning and said, you know what? I want Yuji Nagata on collision. Nobody cares. No. Nobody cares. Like he, he flew them all in this week. Okay. <laughs> He's trying to get them all on this week's shows. It's great. Give Brian who he wants to wrestle and make him happy. Fine. Everybody's going to be watching the Rumble. Give Copeland a murder grandpa tonight. Video aired with Adam Copeland talking about the Cope Open. And he talked about challenges coming his way. Said no one imagined that they'd ever see Minoru Suzuki and Adam Copeland in the same ring. It's great. It's a dream match, I guess, if you want to go that route. But did it live up to expectations? No. But I, I, I will say that Adam Copeland shows how diverse as a performer he is. He could wrestle. He could tell a story. He could fight. He could brawl. He could do it all. One of the best ever. Renee. All stuff that we knew about him. Yeah. Renee Paquette on the stage, and she was about to interview Deanna Perrazzo and Tony Storm. This was a great segment. Now, I got to give AEW some credit here. I love the way that they had shot this. This was a split screen. Deanna Perrazzo was in color, and Tony Storm was in black and white. I thought that was a great addition to uh, continue to sell Tony Storm's gimmick of doing everything in black and white. Right? She's timeless. So they're both sitting there, and Renee is in the center. And we get Tony saying Perrazzo was recently body shamed on social media. Now, this is not the first time that Deanna Perrazzo was body shamed. I mean, if you're going to go out there and body shame Deanna Perrazzo, clearly you are a complete degenerate, number one. Uh, and number two, you probably have never felt the touch of a woman. If you're going to go out there and body shame Deanna Peraza, beautiful woman. So she said it's ridiculous because there's so much more to shame about you. Tony, sh Tony said she's had many friends and all of them are less talented than her. She said she might be the greatest technical wrestler in the world today, but if she steps into the ring with her, she'll twist her lips so hard she'll need an epidural. Perazzo then said she used to be her friend, but she has no problem earning the title opportunity. She said she doesn't want to wrestle this delusional sham version of Tony Storm. Some fans booed. She said she wants to face Storm, who trained in a dojo with her and then moved in and lived with her. She said, that's who I want to beat for the AEW Women's Championship. She told her to dig deep down and find that version of Tony Storm. Then she showed off her ankle tattoo and... Tony Storm has the same matching tattoo on her ankle as well. Storm said she can take her tattoo and blow it right out of your butthole. Perrazzo threw a shoe at Tony Storm. Storm threw a shoe at Perrazzo and then took her down in an armbar. Perrazzo kicked Luther by mistake as Tony Storm and Mariah May fled away. Perrazzo then held up the AEW Women's Championship, and that's the way the segment Came to a close. You know what I want, Jesse? They are on the verge of telling a story here, right? So now we have this, this, this relationship between these two. They're very good friends. Tony Storm is acting bizarre, and Deanna doesn't recognize uh, Tony Storm anymore as she's now timeless. 
but they showed off the matching tattoos. You, you, you know what we need? I, I don't think Tony Khan's going to give it to us because I don't think he has anybody on his fucking team that is capable of writing a long-term story anymore. But what are the meanings of these tattoos? Where did these tattoos come from? Why did they decide to get the tattoos? I hope that they go into the story about why the tattoos are now significant and just not on a surface level. Hey, you got a tattoo. Hey, man, I got the same tattoo. Let's fight. No, I mean, let's now we're, we're on to something here. You got to explain what the, the significance of these tattoos are and why this happened. Am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I didn't know about these tattoos. To me, me it signifies how close of friends they actually really are. And if that's the case, why are we blowing our load with this match so fast? I don't know. I mean, let's, good question. Hold on. I mean, slow down. This could be an extremely long-term feud here, man. Why are we jumping right into this? I mean, it could be, and we get a fuck finish at Revolution, but, you know, then we got Jamie Hayter coming back, and then she's got a factor in. Serena Deeb is coming back on Saturday night. She's wrestling for the first time since 2022. Thunder Rose is racking up wins. Mercedes is rumored to come in, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a crowded scene over there, potentially. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be that way regardless, but... I don't know. It seems like me, they have like a ridiculous uh, chemistry right there, friendship, and right away, it's the first thing they go for. I mean, kind of like the same. I mean, if they had that friendship, I would have brought them in as friends, you know, and let them continue to be friends and then let that feud come out later on. Someone wants me to change my intro to Tony, Tony Khan not doing long-term booking. Bro, my intro is Triple H. I don't have Tony Khan in my intro. I'll put Tony Khan back in the intro when he starts booking a better show than Paul Levesque. Right now, that's not the case. There you go, man. Ah, WWE Shield confirmed. Sorry. Jesse's a TNA Shield. He's going to have Scott Demore. I am. I am a TNA Shield. I put a, I put a thumbnail up that said, is Scott Demore going to be Booker of the Year and get people triggered? How could you put that? Uh, Scott, a, Scott Demore is doing a great job. The question. And Scott's doing a fantastic job. Hey, listen, stuff. man, they might not have the audience, and I might have uh, zinged them a few times here and there, but, I mean, the leadership over there clearly is not a fucking problem. You know why? Everybody's fucking happy. Yeah. You, you, you know what? Sometimes it's not about how much you get done. Sometimes it's what you get done with the least amount of tools. Yeah. And If, if Triple H and, and Tony Khan... Can't lock down Booker of the Year with everything they have at their fucking disposal. What the holy hell? What if you have much less to work with, like a Scott Demore? Mm -hmm. I mean, he should be in the runnings. He should be, I mean, if you grade everything pound for pound for what they're working with, then Scott Demore is actually 100% in the running for Booker of the Year. He will never hit the, the numbers and levels of AEW and WWE, but... Doing what he's doing with what he has to work with, I think he's doing a fantastic job. He is doing a good job over there. Now, again, you know, I don't watch. Jesse watches, but I'm not going to shit on the job he's doing. Everybody's fucking happy over there. Everybody is very pleased with the job he's doing, so good for him. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed this segment. Uh, looking forward to the match. Hopefully, in front of 16,000 people, uh, they reciprocate back to the ladies like they deserve. So, hopefully, uh, we get that energy in uh, this match at Revolution. Backstage promo with John Moxley. He said the Blackpool Combat Club has won a lot of titles, but they haven't thrown victory parties. He says there's always a bigger threat around the corner. He says that's their commitment to, the, to being the best. He said some people come to AEW and think it's a big party, but there is no party in 2024. He says he's going to pulverize anyone who can't get with the program and keep it up. He said when he steps in the ring on Friday... He'll cut his heart out and bleed out if that's what he has to do to give every bit of his heart and soul to the fans who paid their hard-earned money to watch what it is that he does and what is supposed to be the best pro wrestling show in the world. And right now, he's wrestling Lee Moriarty on Rampage Friday. Oh, man, I can't wait to not tune in to watch that. Who cares? Does anybody Is anybody it. excited about Rampage and Lee Moriarty against John Moxley? I'll be watching it, man. I, I can't wait, man. Great. You well, let me know how it goes. You let me know how it goes, man. I may uh, even I may even call you again on Friday while I'm live there at SmackDown. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. 
Taya Valkyrie and Johnny TV are on Dynamite. Oh my who? goodness. Who? Where? Who, who are these who people? Who is this? Johnny TV? Never heard of. Who is this? Jo jo Johnny Nitro. Right? John Johnny Impact. John Morrison. Why, Johnny why, Lucha why on the is, ground. Why is Johnny TV and Taya Valkyrie together in this promo? What, what is happening here? Well, they are actually a duo on Ring of Honor. So something good is coming off that show. Shocker. So, uh, so are they a couple? Well, they're married in real life. How, how do we know this? I don't know. Let's act social media. I mean, that, 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 that's what I mean. Let's act social media, man. Only, only the geeks on social media who live behind fucking fake profile pictures, uh, profile pictures know the lives of all these entertainers, man. They, they live for that's, it. That's, that's what I mean. I know that they're a couple and they've been a couple. You know it. Most of the people here know it. But what about you just put them on TV just hanging out together? Not everyone knows that they're a married couple. Tell us. I mean, uh, the, the makeout session that they did didn't convince you enough? I've made out with women that I wasn't married to before. Tell us they're a married couple. All right, listen, calm down there, bro, okay? <laughs> calm down. We got, we got bigger fish to fry here instead of fucking complaining <laughs> about, please, <laughs> please tell us that Taya and Johnny TV are a married couple. These are, these are, these are the little things. For my guy who's talk, who talks about the little things, now you don't care about the fucking little things. Make up your fucking mind. These are the little things. You I want to know why TV. the fuck they're on TV. Where did they come from? They they kissed in the ring, so they're married. Then is that what it is? Did they he? Did, did, what so what happened to QTV? Why is he Johnny TV if QTV doesn't exist? Hugging and kissing in the ring does not mean you're a married couple. Tell us they're a married couple. Give us a reason. Tell us what's going on. I don't really give a shit. Me either. John Morrison is way too. <laughs> John Morrison. Me either. John Morrison is way too talented to be stuck on Ring of Honor. How many people they got watching over there? Now? How many people they got over there? What, five? I have no idea. They got, they got, they got less than Impact, right? Or less than TNA, right? Uh, Listen, man, Imp uh, TNA uh, broke uh, records, man. They, they, they did over 112,000 viewers on, uh, on Thursday. One of the highest numbers of all time. For... For the, the weekly show? Yeah. What was it? Uh, Osprey and uh, and who? Josh Alexander? Yeah, but through what? Through Access? Or through yeah, this, through Access, right? yeah. Through Access. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know that many homes had Access. Me neither. Okay. All right. Listen, man, stop nit nitpicking. It's my job, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'm going to call out when you're nitpicking. Go ahead. Say Valkyrie said they're the most TV-ready <laughs> couple in pro wrestling. Really? That's why you're stuck on Ring of Honor. Taya says she's not one of these dumb girlies who doesn't know who the virtuosa is. I'm very familiar with who the virtuosa is, she says. She said she'll see her next week live on Dynamite in New Orleans. Great. A loss for Taya Valkyrie. Thank you for coming. Basically, yeah. Uh, we're going into hour two here. And before we get into Swerve Strickland versus Jeff DUI, uh, we're going to get into... Uh, did I say that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I, lo I love Jeff, man. Listen, what I don't give a man, fuck. I don't give a shit what comes out of my mouth, man. You know no. what? You know what I care about? That you support my sponsor for tonight's show, man. Tonight we're sponsored by Game Time. If you guys need tickets to sporting events, concerts, Broadway plays, Game Time has got you covered. Make sure you guys use that promo code JDNY. Download the app on Android or Apple devices. Sign up, create an account, and then use that promo code to get $20 off your first purchase. I'll be back in a minute. This is a sponsor time for my friends over at Game Time today, sponsoring the AW Dynamite Post right here on OTS. Game Time built a ticket marketplace that makes it faster and easier to get into your favorite events at a moment's notice. Game Time provides the premier marketplace for last minute tickets to the most popular events in sports, music, and in theater across 60 cities in the United States and in Canada, eliminating the need for printing and built a better way to access the best live experiences right from your mobile device. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use promo code JDNY for $20 off your first purchase. One of my favorite things about the Game Time app is that no matter what you want to do or where you want to go, Game Time is going to give you complete peace of mind 
with your purchase. You could see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Game Time has deals on tickets right up till the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. And find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more, all with Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use that code JDNY for $20 off. Your first purchase terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem that code JDNY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you guys for checking out my sponsor, Game Time. Just download the app and make sure you guys create an account. Use that promo code JDNY and save $20 off your first purchase. Swear versus Jeff Hardy, Jesse. That what Ticket Drew works? No. How did no. Ticket Drew get a sponsor on your channel? No, he didn't get no sponsor. He didn't get no sponsor, man. It's game time. Man. You know, it's time for us. Time to talk about Swerve and Jeff Hardy, man. Uh, I thought this was a good match, man. I was actually surprised at how good Jeff looked here. What did you think of Jeff Hardy in this match against Swerve? Now, we know Swerve is money, and Swerve is going to carry Jeff Hardy to a good match, or anybody, for that matter, to a good match. But Jeff looked really good tonight. Um, I was going to say Jeff looked like he did not want to be there tonight. Well, I mean, he started complaining that he was on Rampage and stuck on the Rampage void. Now he's on Dynamite Wrestling, the hottest wrestler in the industry, and he's still upset. He just, he, he just looked like, uh, um, bro, you could be 100% right. He could have been 1,000% happy. All I'm saying is how he looked to me. He just looked like I just, I don't give a fuck look. Well, maybe he didn't get any sleep last night, like me. It's possible. Maybe he was just tired. But the last thing I saw on his face was how he looked good tonight. He 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 looked like he was just going through the fucking motions. Maybe he's sick. And, felt like maybe it. he's sick and tired of hearing Matt complain about Rebby. I don't know. What is going on with them? I have no. I none of my business. None of this shit is your business. I don't know. None of what we have discussed here tonight is any of your business. I don't know. Go follow her on TikTok, man. I'm sure there uh, is an answer that lies within. I don't know. I have opinions about TikTok that I'm not going to give because I might offend most of the people here that have TikTok. Anyway, uh, I thought this was a decent match. Swerve gets the victory here over Jeff Hardy. Hardy looked pretty good here for a singles match. Uh, if he keeps this up or can keep this up, I wouldn't mind him, you know, sporadically on TV here. Uh, but uh, who knows what Tony Khan's got planned for Jeff, Matt, or if they are going to be the Hardy boys. I, I have no idea what we're doing here. But uh, Swerve had Hardy on the top rope. Hardy fought back. And eventually landed a twist of fate on the ringside steps on Swerve. Uh, fans chanted, holy shit, looked like a great spot. Hardy threw Swerve back in the ring and then yanked off his t-shirt, hit a swanton. Swerve moved out of the way. Swerve kicked Hardy in the head with the house call. Goes for cover, gets a two count. He then starts pounding on the mat in frustration. Hardy scored a couple of two counts with some leverage pin attempts. Swerve landed a face plant a couple of seconds later. Followed by his rolling vertical suplex and then a swerve stomp off the top rope for the win. And that was basically the match. Swerve gets the victory. So now we got Swerve winning. We got Paige winning. They're both winning. And next week, Jesse, we have Adam Page backstage being interviewed by Renee after this match. She said that he's 3-0 in 2024, which should put him close to the top of the rankings when they drop at the end of the month. Swerve walks in, interrupted, and said he's also 3-0. Do you know the last person that I beat? Obviously, it was Hangman. Hangman called him a dumbass. They yelled at each other. Hangman was about to storm off. Renee said she had breaking news from Tony Khan that next week, Hangman and Swerve will be in Dealer's Choices match. Matches. So what this means is that Hangman chooses Swerve's opponent next week, and Swerve chooses Hangman's opponent next week. Could be anybody. So that's what we are doing here. Uh, another week of mindless, nothing matches that are going to surround these two on who gets the most victory so that they can both be put in the triple threat match. Yeah, stipulations like this just make me wonder why they just don't have them face each other. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I get why they're not facing each other. I'm not saying that's what they should do. But going about it like this, that, that is the feeling I get from it. That's why I'm like, just book the triple threat. And then it makes sense as to why you're not having these guys touch each other. 
book the triple threat didn't say i don't want you guys putting your hands on each other into the pay-per-view put whatever stipulation you want in there and then it makes sense otherwise i don't see why hangman and swerve aren't beating the shit out of each other next week on fucking dynamite you know, I, I, do, I do think that they're eventually going to cross paths and get one more match together. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen in this build towards Revolution. It could very well happen. Uh, if it does, I, I can't see Swerve beating Paige or Paige beating Swerve. I mean, Tony Khan has not used the time limit draw in a regular traditional match away from the Continental Classic. We saw one in the Continental Classic with Brian and Claudio. But, uh, I mean, we could go that route, and they can cancel each other out, and then at that point, it could be determined that both of them get a championship match, or Swerve can win the championship, and then the first guy that he wrestles is Paige for the championship, and he beats Paige and then ends the feud. You can't do that, man. Now you're just burying Paige all together. I mean, I don't know what I mean, we do here. But, but I, do like, I do like the tie. They have not run a tie in a while, and the storyline would call for it. I think those are the two parameters I would set for yeah. using a tie on TV. The storyline needs to call for it, you know, and and it needs to make sense. They could do that. They haven't done it in a while. You know, you can't do it all the time, and it has to make sense. Those are the two fucking parameters. I think this qualifies. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that they'll be in the ring together. That may be something that they do, but then I have to ask, as a little asterisk next to it, I mean, they wrestled the traditional match at Wrestle Dream. They had the unbelievable match, the Texas Death Match at Full Gear. They're going to go and have a third match be a traditional wrestling match after a fucking Texas death match? I mean, it's like... No, you can have a last man standing. Well, one something. Yeah, it's the last man standing. I mean, last man standing. What else could you yeah. do in this case? Steel cage? I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah. there's something. Just make it a fuck fit. I don't, I don't want to see Hangman get, get, get beat for a third consecutive time by the same guy. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point, you are just not as good as Swerve. Get the fuck away from him. Yeah. You know, but, that, but they're still going at it. This is not a good time to beat Swerve because he's on a trajectory to be world champion. Uh, I, th I think a tie and a, and a fantastic barn burner would be the. You can also do an Iron Man match that can end in a draw. You know, I mean, just something, just something that that's entertaining, fantastic, and the draw makes sense. You know, but these two guys, they've been beating the shit out of each other. They 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 are, to me, they are just as good as one another. It just so happens that Swerve put out the victory on both two occasions. That's all. I, I will say it is it is very exciting to see two guys like this that have that fight forever feel. It's like it's like they're destined to fucking be each other's eternal enemy. I like that. Yes. I lo I love I love feuds like that because we don't really get that to cross our our paths as fans all that often. You know, I think the last time I truly felt that way was maybe Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa on NXT. You know, it's like they were destined to fucking just be at each other's oh, throat. Indeed. I feel like they were destined to be partners. Those two. Yeah, but they were also destined to be fucking enemies. I mean, they fought four times. How can you be destined to two different separate things? Which one are they destined for? I don't know. They were, they, they listen, man, they, they are best friends, but they, I, to me, I thought they were better enemies. The they may respect each other. They may respect each other, Paige and Swerve, but I think they're better enemies. The closest comparison I can find to these two is Rock and Triple H. Those two were destined to fucking fight forever. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. I guess you could do that too. I mean, that's going a, a, a level above. And how is that? Has that not come full circle or what? Is it? I mean, think about it. The Rock is Triple H's boss. Is a uh, boss now? Am I right? Yeah, I think what he is. The yeah. Hell? Look at this comment we got. I got. I got to call this out. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. This is hilarious from the Amish electrician, man. Who who banned him? Hooligan banned him. I think. Um, he says was going to give you a listen, but you're cum gargling for views again. So I guess AEW wasn't good enough. I don't... But you're here. You're in my chat. But you're here. You're on my stream. <laughs> You're one of the 2,000 that are alive. You're not on Fightful. You're not on Solid Monster. You're not on Don Tony. You're not on none of these guys. You're here. You're here. <laughs> you fucking idiot. I'm sorry. Is our AEW criticisms not good enough for you? Go watch somebody else who's going to paint the fucking beautiful picture. Rainbows and flowers and fucking... Give you exactly you, what you want to hear, man. You, you come here, you're going to get the truth. It wasn't a good show tonight. Here. 
you've already contributed to this channel. When you click that thumbnail, you've already you've already contributed to the ad revenue. You've already, you've already added to, to my channel. audience retention and my viewership. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Fucking idiots. Go back to Amish country. Get out. Thunder Rosa. She went one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> You no, know, there was a back in the day. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get off track for a half a second. There was a a preacher over in California back in the day that bought a bunch of gangster rap CDs and tapes, put them all in the middle of the street, and then got like a bulldozer and ran them over and smashed them and said, you know, this this gangster rap that de de you know degrades women and promotes violence. This shit needs to go. And then they asked Snoop Dogg about it. You know what Snoop said? That motherfucker bought my album first before he crushed it. I don't give a shit. What he do it? Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, really. You bought it, you idiot. <laughs> like all that. <laughs> like, like, like listen, I, I can't stand Budweiser and the fucking the, the propaganda that they, that they pushed with fucking some dude dressed as a as a woman, really. But Kid Rock bought how much Budweiser and then fucking shot it with a, a machine gun or whatever the fuck he... Like, bro, you bought how much Budweiser to you waste all that Budweiser? Who the... What the fuck? <laughs> you fucking bought it. <laughs> Don't drink it! It sucks anyway! My Ridiculous. God. Ridiculous. Thunder Rosa. She went one-on-one -on -one with Red Velvet somewhere. Tony Brown is very happy. Oh, yeah, he is. Um... I thought this was, listen, man, I will say one, one positive and one negative here, okay? Uh, happy that Thunder Rose is back on television. We love Thunder Rose, even though she might uh, want to kick your ass and she might hate what we do. Hope that's, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, no, but even, she, though comment, even though commentary said this is her first singles match back. Yeah, she, look, she looked genuinely excited to be back. I could have swore I saw her in a singles match on Collision. Uh, who did she wrestle? I don't know. Oh, fuck, who did she wrestle? Uh, Queen Amanada? Oh, yeah. 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 Who? Right. But this is the first ma singles match back. Okay. Um, She looked happy to be there. She looked genuinely she happy to be back. did. Yes. She looked like the polar opposite of Jeff fucking Hardy. Yes. She looked like she was genuinely enjoying herself. Um, Now, one negative. I thought this match was clunky. Um, I thought it was... Uh, yeah. And most of it happened in the commercial break. So it's like, how, how true... Of a match was it when I'm watching fucking picture in picture and uh, Thunder Rose is back on Dynamite for the first time in a year. It's like, can I just watch the woman work without any interruption, please? Dude, you know, you, you, you put two women in the ring together who collectively have been out for about two fucking years. Yeah, they both of them, both of them have ring rust right now. So, I mean, of course the match was fucking clunky. Guess, <laughs> Who booked this? Whatever. Thunder Rosa got a victory here. Uh, we went to commercial break, which most of this match happened in the commercial break. We came back from commercial. Rosa was battling back us. Red Velvet was on the offense. Uh, Rosa followed with a charging low drop kick and a northern lights after... Uh, after that, Velvet fought back with a series of strikes. Casadora double stomp. Running double knees in the ropes led to Velvet trying to springboard Bulldog, but Rosa avoided. Took way too long to try for a finish, allowing Velvet to backdrop out of it. Rosa rolled through. Shotgun drop kick on the ropes. Tijuana bomb for the win. Post-match, Rosa looked into the camera and said, when, when is my time, Tony Storm, or dot, dot, dot. And she was trying to think of Julia Hart's name. Did she, did she legitimately get Julia Hart's name? I don't, I don't know if she got to it. They cut away, and I was trying to listen. But I, I felt like she was trying to say, when am I going to get my shot, you know, Tony Storm, or I'm like, Julia Hart, or Julia Hart. And she was like, um. Did she I get? she drew a blank on Julia Hart's name. Did she get concussed during the match, and she forgot her, she forgot what was going on? What the, how do you forget know. Julia Hart's name? I don't know about all of that, but she probably just forgot her name. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's not good. And it looks like we're setting up Julia Hart versus Tony uh, versus, uh, not Tony, Julia Hart versus Thunder Rose at the pay-per-view. Are they? Looks like the direction to me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. And who wins if that's the case? I mean, does Thunder Rosa win the TBS title? I would not, no. I that's know. why I wouldn't make that match. I don't know why we're doing that match then. I would not book that match, no. Anyway. It, it is not, do not take that title off of Julia Hart, no. Anyway. Sting and Darby against Big Bill and Ricky Starks was booked for two weeks from tonight. 
Tony Giovanni introduced Sting and Darby Allen. Allen brought up the impact that Sting made on his career. Allen said Sting influenced him far before teaming in AEW when Sting's career was nearly cut short, and Darby questioned if the same could happen to him. Years later, when Allen heard Sting was coming to AEW, he flew to Texas to train at Sting's home, and after training a bit, told Sting he still got it. We cut to the back, and the Young Bucks are with their headsets on, and they're watching the show from monitors in the back. They're doing their EVP business. Allen said he and Sting are undefeated at 27-0, and and with the rankings back, it makes sense to challenge Ricky Starks and Big Bill for the AW Tag Team titles. Allen told Sting once again he still got it, and then asked Sting if he wants to end his career as AEW Tag Team Champion. Sting soaked in the chance and simply said, he's all in. Looks like we got the match. Yeah, I'm all for this. I mean, they're not doing shit with those titles, and no one gives a shit about them. No, I'll get to that in a second. Ricky Starks and Big Bill were backstage, and they did cut a promo on Sting and Darby after this segment. And they thanked both of these guys for having the respect to address them by name and the fact that they were the AEW World Tag Team Champions. Because, I mean, Tony Khan's not doing it, so Darby and Sting get the uh, thanks for that. Bill said as far as their challenge goes, they accept. Starks said it's fitting that Sting's first match in AEW was against him in a tag team match and promised Sting that he will end him and won't make it to revolution. So clearly... Sting and Darby winning the tag team titles because they're not losing before the pay-per-view. We will have new tag team champions. Uh, Ricky Starks was basically given these tag team championships. This is just me talking out of my ass here. This is just my opinion, my opinion only. This has nothing to do with Jesse unless he wants to say he agrees with me. I think Ricky Starks was given these tag team championships as a way to convince him, hey, man, we got plans for you. We value you. We want to keep you around. Ricky's going to lose these titles, bro. And then he's out the door in what I believe is a contract year for Ricky Starks. He's going to join Cody Rhodes over at WWE, man. Goodbye. Yeah, that guy's gone. Dude. As good as gone. He, he is out of here. Gone. I, I would I would, I would, would bring in Enzo, have Enzo kill Ricky Starks, and take his tag title and bring back Enzo and Cass. Well, get, Ricky Starks is gone. I would totally bring in Enzo. I would bring in Enzo. Yeah. Bring in Enzo and, and Big Bill is is his value goes straight up. Did you time out somebody for 600 seconds because they said Julia Hart sucks? Sure did. Why? Because she doesn't suck. That's his opinion, though. But he's not banned. Oh my God. You are one to fucking talk. Are you serious right what are you now? Do- what are you doing, man? Are you serious right now? An opinion. You. Of all people, you? Who, me? I don't bench anybody, man. What are you talking about? I haven't benched anybody all year. <laughs> oh, look, it's Cucky. Oh, man, I wonder if he's going to make a, an appearance at WrestleMania. Is he going to be in Philly? He's going he's gonna to be uh, at the watch along this weekend, bro. Oh, man. Clucky is watching for Cody, man. Starks is, Starks is on the phone right now asking Jade. Yeah, hey, Jade, how is it over there? Good? How's the performance center? It's, it's, it's pretty? Beautiful? Ricky is gone. What's Dude. Orlando weather like in January? So does, so does Cody want to come back because of Rock? I don't know. I don't, I, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rant on the Sports Illustrated stuff later. What, what, uh, where is Cody's mindset right now? Cody will finish his story. Where? We need, to, we need to finish this review. So you can get on Destiny, and then I can get on Destiny and do a dungeon. Okay? <laughs> uh, we got a uh, six-man tag team titles or AEW trios titles, whatever the fucking case is here with these fucking titles. I don't mean shit. Acclaimed Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, and Daddy Ass defeated the Mogul Embassy, Brian Cage, Toa Leona, and Bishop Khan with Prince Nana. Switchblade, Jay White, and the Guns made their entrance. I love their theme. I think it, I think their entrance is great. Love those guys. The Guns? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's Jay, better when Juice is there. Yeah. Jay White is great, too. We miss Juice. Yeah. Um. I mean, what do you want to say about this? They, they just lost the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles, too. The Bullet Club, and now they're challenging for the AW Trios titles. Why? Does anybody have a good explanation for that? Did I miss something? Uh, maybe you're just nitpicking, bro. 
So we lose one set of titles and then go challenge for the other set of titles. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's normal. How it works. That's that's normal. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good, man. That's good TV. That's great bucket there, TK, man. That's Holy good shit, shit, pal. Wow, man. Listen, I don't know what you're paying the rest of the guys on the riding team, but I mean, if they're working for peanuts, I mean, you could break me in, man, and fucking ruffle some feathers over there. I mean, come on. The fuck are we doing here, man? It's good shit, pal. Let's merge these fucking titles and get rid of the Ring of Honor six man tag team titles. We don't need them. I'm, see, we don't. That's need what them. you're trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out why we have a six man double trios faction that makes no sense. Dad is in the other half of the faction. His sons are on the other half. We have not seen any kind of reconciliation there at all. But they're in the same faction. Nothing. Poor Jay what White. the hell is going on? Poor Jay White. <laughs> and the, the the only the only fucking thing that's bringing a smile to his face right now, he's got a new jacket on shopaw.com, Jay White. Oh man. That's, who gives a fuck? Honestly, who gives a shit? Seriously. Jay if White you did. can make sense of this, I'd love to hear your fucking excuse. This shit sucks. Sucks. I don't know. Only thing I could think of here is that they're getting ready to merge those two sets of Whatever. titles. Serena D was going to be on collision. We love her. <laughs> Thank God she's back. Yes. Cannot wait. And Adam Copeland. He was in the main event against Minoru Suzuki. Clearly, we talked about this earlier. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I didn't, I didn't really care for it. I love Adam Copeland. I don't give a fuck about Suzuki. Uh, this was a match... That nobody really expected to see. Uh, was it a fun little main event for all the little people that love this type of thing? Oh, look, uh, Minoru Suzuki's on AW Dynamite. It's great. Now, I'm glad you got your fucking fix in. I'm over boring grandpa. We've seen it one too many times already. The appeal is not there. It's gone. The luster is gone. That new car smell is gone. You can sing his theme all you want. Go listen to it on Spotify. I'm over it. Okay. Um, it was a. It was a. It, is, it was a match. fight. It was a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a main event. Though. No. No. So they slugged it out. As soon as the bell rang, forearms and punches. We got Suzuki uh, forearming Copeland. Dropped him. Suzuki wanted a gotch pile driver. Thank God that didn't happen. Copeland backdropped out. Suzuki suckered Copeland into the ropes with an arm breaker. Copeland fought free, hit a big boot, tried to spear, but Suzuki sidestepped him into a guillotine out to the floor, pulled him right through the ropes. Copeland charged in, broke through the barricade into the crowd. Bryce Renberg got to a nine. Both guys made it back in by the count of nine and a half. Suzuki rose with a smile on his face, more forearms thrown at each other. Both guys were on their knee throwing bombs at each other. They rose to their feet. Forearms continued. Man, this is a fucking barn burner here, man. What a, what a mat classic here, man. Forearms are all over the place. Uh, this one uh, eventually collapsed. Both guys, because they connected at the same time. Suzuki got up first. He lit Copeland up with some open-hand pump strikes, then tried for another arm bar. Copeland spun into an impaler DDT. Suzuki doesn't take good bumps. This looked awful. Dueling chants from the crowd. This is awesome. And we got uh, Copeland wanting a spear. He ran into a Fujiwara armbar. Copeland got to the ropes. Suzuki wanted a rear naked choke. Copeland shook him off, hit a spear, goes for recovery, gets a two count. Copeland couldn't believe the spear didn't end Suzuki. Suzuki rose up like the Undertaker, sank in the rear naked choke. Copeland was fading. His face was turning purple. And then uh, he gets the arm to drop. And then Copeland drove Suzuki face first into the corner after surviving that submission. Copeland delivered a kill switch, which looked awful because Suzuki can't take a fucking face bump. And he gets the victory over Suzuki with the kill switch. Christian Cage was shown in the back watching backstage with a disgusted look on his face. So we got some continuation there. Last week, we got no Christian Cage. Uh, Copeland gets on the microphone post-match and says he's never been hit that hard before in his life and offered to shake his hand, showing respect. Suzuki growled, and he walked off without shaking Copeland's hand. Copeland said... He would have been a little disappointed had Suzuki actually shook his hand. This was a war until Christian Cage, he still has him in his sights, and he's still coming for him. And that's the way the show went off the air. I was waiting for something else to happen. I missed that cutaway to Christian Cage 
Was that a pre-tape? Tell me that was a pre-tape and he wasn't there. No, he was there. He was there tonight. Yeah. Why didn't he come out? I don't know, man. Maybe we should ask that. Maybe we should ask the uh, il- uh, exclusive, elusive, and fucking unbelievable writing team that Tony Khan has. I mean, if if you want to show him in the back watching, okay, maybe it was pre-taped and you just slotted it in. That's okay. That works. But. If this Why if this he, show if this show <laughs> if this show generates the worst rating in AEW history, I would not be surprised. Yeah, it was not it, it just it wasn't listen, I mean Paige and Swerve are fucking excellent. Okay. So anything that they do and anything that they do in the ring is gonna be great. I'm not even I'm not even blaming them. But outside them, what did we get? What do we got? But we're gonna we're gonna rank this as a thumbs up show because Adam Page is a great pro wrestler. Swerve is a great pro wrestler. Pent is a great pro wrestler. You're gonna need more than that, man. No. There's just so there's so much wrong. I mean, we had a great week last week. It's like, all right. It's like we take one step forward and then three steps back every fucking week here. Clearly, there's an issue. There's attendance issues, there's an interest issue, there's storyline issues. Thought a ranking system's gonna save this fucking joint. Give me a break. I nobody gives it, a it shit won't. about uh, nobody gives a shit about AW right now. Nobody, nobody, not it's even us. Cold. And we've been here. We've been here every fucking week for five years. Yep, it's ice cold right now, man. Revolution's gonna be great. I'm sure they'll flesh out all their storylines, but the lead-in. I mean, we're, we're this is this is some we're battling some rough fucking seas over here, man. Holy shit. Anyway. Let's get into the Super Chats and then get the hell out of here. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. You guys are awesome. Follow us on social media, at JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Make sure you guys go check out all the other videos on the channel with more coming tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to be a busy week. Going to end the week, end the month strong. Also, go check out my sponsor for tonight's show, Game Time. Download the app, Android and Apple devices. Download the app, create an account. You guys need tickets? You guys want to attend the show? I got you. Sports, Broadway, concerts, $20 off your first purchase. Use that promo code JDNY at checkout. Game Time is the sponsor for tonight's show. I want to thank them very, very much. Go follow Jesse on social media at JD from NY206. Myself at Shy Town Smart is Jesse. Go follow his YouTube channel as well. Click the name in the description. It'll take you right to his channel. Jesse's gonna and be doing Royal Rumble yep. watch along. Jesse's gonna be doing a Rumble watch along on Saturday night. Then you guys can watch me for the Rumble post right here on Off the Scripts. Drew, Andrew Baydala, and myself will be doing a live stream. I got a Confirm with him on Saturday afternoon for the Rumble predictions. Got it all ready to go. That'll be exclusively on X. Gonna try that out. A little test run to see if we want to add an additional TNT show to the lineup. I don't know yet. And guys, big news, man. We are in discussions with Deviate. You don't know who Deviate is? Get with the program. They have done all my graphics and all my artwork, man. They make off the scripts. The most popular, most beautiful, and most interactive podcast in the entire IWC. We are getting new shit done, man. We got an exclusive TNT logo. or not logo, but an exclusive TNT uh, intro getting done by DV8. That's going to be the new lead into the show on Tuesday nights. That'll be done in about a month. We are changing the Mustang that I typically drive to the venue over to the Dark Horse. It's going to be all Dark Horse related. And we are getting a new outro and a new scene all together, man. Before we hit the highway and before you see the window roll down, man, we're going to be coming out of the OTS garage. Oh, man. It's going to be great. And I'm looking forward to that outro. You may need park on the fucking street. Who? What? Man, it's a uh, garage. Man, you don't want to park in the street outside the venue, man. Have you seen what it looks like, man? Looks yeah, like fucking got them out there. Oh, shit. Anyway, Michael Krause with a $2 super chat. JD and Jesse, Drew, thank you for keeping the streams fun. Thank you, Michael, for always being here, man. Michelle Moran with a $2 super chat. When Cody left, he took storytelling with him. Yes, he did. Jesse always said, man, when Cody left and when Brandy left, things went down the toilet. Yeah, I, I went back and looked at that crap, man. When Brandy left, the women's division started that decline. 
I seriously think she was one of back there advocating for the women in the heat. Though. Yeah. Tony Brown with a 499. Some sweet Dominican booty meat. Red velvet. Yes, Tony, we know you love red velvet. She's a beautiful lady. Dominican? I didn't know that. Half Dominican? Skinner with a 99 cents super chat. Brother, I got your DM, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I, there's nothing I could really do, man, though I would love to help you. Skinner absolutely is uh, a VIP here, but he, he accidentally unsubscribed, and now he has to wait four weeks to chat in the live stream. I don't know how I could help you there, man. I do that because I, I, I try to limit the trolls, man. I don't know. I don't know how to go around that unless I make you a mod. I don't know. Tenario with a five ninety nine. JD, what is your favorite Royal Rumble undercard match? That's a good question, man. Oh my goodness! You know what? I'm gonna throw one at you. I'm gonna throw two at you. Number one, Brian and Bray Wyatt from the 2014 Royal Rumble, and 1994 Yokozuna versus the Undertaker casket match. I'm sure there are all the ones that are great. Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio, I'm sure. Or something with Jericho or Benoit related. But listen, I love those two matches, man. They are uh, definitely parts of my child. Razor Ramon versus Bret Hart at the 1993 Royal Rumble. Some great stuff. Um, what is Rust? Who? Rust? This guy saying 1v1 me and Rust. Oh, Rust is a Modern Warfare 3 man. I don't play Modern Warfare 3, man. Who plays Call of Duty in 2024, man? Get with the program. Apparently, Mc, McDermott? Who's it? Micah McCoy? does it. He's an OG. I don't know. He do used that. to watch my COD content. He wants to 1v1 you, man. Snipers only. Rust. Oh, I hate fucking snipers, dude. Get out there and fight. I hate... Standing in the back of the map, hiding so no one can see you. Go fight. Billy, Adam, and Billy again. Thank you for the $100 Super Chats. Billy with the 200 and Adam with the 100 man. Thank you guys very much. Uh, Kid Revos with the $10 Super Chat. Ranking systems won't fix the issue. When there was a ranking system, all TK did was have a person rank up wins on Dark and Elevation. Then they would show up as number one for a shot at the belt. Well, thank God we don't have Dark anymore. But if he starts ranking up wins on Ring of Honor and then we get fucking someone on Dynamite and I got to sit on this show and ask, where the fuck did they get these wins from? Then we're going to have a problem. ROH. Yeah. Ramsey Swain with an I-99. Thanks, JD, for everything you do. I work nights and I listen to you every time you're live, so I don't need to watch wrestling. I also play Destiny 2 and we should sh exchange PS5 IDs. I Listen, man, I'm always, I'm looking for a, a, a solid, consistent raid group, man. I haven't found that outside. My guys don't even play anymore. My PlayStation 5 name is Shottown Smart. Not hard to find, though. Yeah, but they can't friend me like they can friend you, though. I have that well, shit turned off. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hiding behind. I'm not, I'm not a, a, a yuppie hiding behind a, a, a off switch. Are you scared, bro? Listen, man, I get, uh, I get so many messages, man. I got to shut it off. Are you a celebrity now? Yeah. Kid Revos with a five. Undisputed Kingdom should be a force putting pressure on all areas of AEW and every belt rather than them seemingly waiting for MJF. Yeah. Why don't we tell that to Tony Khan? Oh, I have a way you can get your, um, your subscriber back. Who? Oh, yeah. How? Yeah. How? Again, I can't sub. For oh, yeah. Scanner, how? Um, I'll, I'll tell you off the air. Okay. Uh, Adam Casper with a five. Thank you, brother. Any possibility we see Thunder Rosa, Deanna, and Tony Storm in a triple threat match at Revolution? Uh, I don't like that match because neither any one of these women can't lose. I don't know why would you do that. Yeah. And we already have a triple threat match yeah. coming, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Eric Newton with a 25 months. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, GP with a two. Thoughts on the SI article. Bad for Cody, if true. It's not true. I will talk about this in an extra that's going live tomorrow early in the morning. Uh, Adam Casper with another five. Thank you, brother. Uh, Jay White and the Guns will turn the acclaim that some, turn on the acclaim at some point in the future. I hope so. And merge those titles. Get them out. Uh, Clone Force 
with a 499 and a 499. He says this, and this will be the last two here. Uh, JD and Jesse, what's up, guys? Hope all is going well. Uh, and who do you guys got in the final four for their rumbles? And who do you guys got winning? And I got Punk. Um, I mean, I, I'm listen. I, I don't know who the final four is going to be. It's always tough to tell who the final four is going to be. I'm going. I'm going with Cody, and I'm going with Bailey. And then Clone Force says, meant to say, hope all is going good. Sorry for the misspelling. And final four for myself, he says, is Punk Cody Drew Sammy. What do you got winning the Rumble, bro? I don't know, man. Um, I kind of jokingly said The Rock before, but I know he doesn't, he doesn't need to win the Rumble. Jesse thinks Akira Tozawa is winning the Royal Rumble. Um, I may have to. It can't be Punk because he's not going to be anywhere near a main event. At Mania, so it's not gonna be Punk. I don't know about Cody. I don't think he's gonna be anywhere near a main event either. So the question, I, I, I'm about to say Gunther, man. That's a good one. Gunther was my pick before Punk even got to the WWE. So uh, if Gunther wins the Royal Rumble, I'm gonna be thrilled. He deserves it. I'm about to say Gunther. It's, it's gonna come down to what's gonna happen with Seth in that title. Yeah. Uh, listen, man, we, we we could we could get Punk versus Cody. We could get Seth versus Gunther and then Roman versus The Rock. I don't think that's going to end up being the case, though. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think I, we I think we yeah, get but... I think we get Punk Rollins. I think we get Gunther Brock. And then I think we get Reigns and Roman uh, Reigns and uh, Cody. From, from the thumbnail, your, your thumbnail, Cody and Punk had a had a face off. Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. Are they are they having a one on one at the Rumble? No, they, they they were explaining why each other is going to win the rumble. So that if look if they're not having a one on one at the rumble, then they're having a match at WrestleMania. I don't see the purpose in that. Me either. But what else do you have if everything else is booked up? Roman's going to be with Rock. Uh, um, Seth is going to be with Gunther. Put those two together. I don't know. Apparently, Seth doesn't need surgery. I I don't know. I mean. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. We'll find out on Saturday night. I mean, all will be revealed on Saturday, so. Yeah, so if they put Punk with Seth, it looks like Seth needs to drop that title because he's hurt. Yeah. He's not going to drop it to Punk. He'd probably drop it to Gunther. That's what I said on Monday. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like, why, why are you going to give Punk the title if Rollins needs to go away and get surgery? You might as well give it to somebody that fucking deserves it. Punk doesn't yeah. deserve it. Gunther deserves it. Yeah, I agree with that. I didn't even see that review, but yeah, I agree with that. That's exactly what I said. Anyway, guys, uh, I am going to uh, get working on this extra that I got for you guys tomorrow. Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. It's going to be a busy week. It's going to be a busy weekend. You guys are going to want to keep it right here on Off The Script. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Go follow Jesse. Shot Town Smart, click his name in the description and go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's going to be doing a Rumble viewing party on Saturday night on YouTube. And make sure you guys hit that thumbs up here. Let's try for a thousand likes if we can right here on OTS. Guys, thank you so very much. Go and download Game Time to your Apple or Android device. Use that promo code JD from NY and get yourself some tickets and enjoy a night out with the wife or the girlfriend. And I will see you tomorrow with more content right here on the podcast on Off The Script. I will see you guys later. Mm -hmm.